What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here heading into the month of July in 2019. And guys, I'm super, super excited for this month because I'm finally back here in New Jersey from my vacation in Mexico. And I was in Mexico for about 10 days, guys. So the month of June was a bit funky for me trading away from from my home base and don't get me wrong I do like going on vacation I do like you know trading in other places but something about just trading from home you know trading from the office the way I always do it you know I love it and I love getting back from vacation and you know kind of being at home and I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that but anyway I have a bunch of stocks and ETFs here on my watch list and they're written out here on the notepad as you guys can see here I have about six seven eight stocks ETFs and we're going to be talking about those in today's video so if you guys enjoy the content here feel free to smash that like button it really supports me and supports the channel in general and let's just start off with the S&P 500 here so we can get an understanding very quickly in under a minute you know what did the S&P do over this past week over these past five days and to do that we're going here to the five day five minute chart and we'll get to see a bunch of what really happened this past week week. Guys, remember how the market was a bit overheated? We were running up aggressively throughout the whole month of July, uh, June, right? We hit the bottom at about 27.38. We ran up all the way to about 29.64, which was actually an all-time high. And we were talking about how at that point, markets were very, very overbought and we were in need of a cool-off. We finally got that cool-off over these past couple of trading days. You guys can see, you know, starting on the 24th of June, we had one, two, three cool off days, and we ended up holding that 180 SMA here on that 10 day, 30 minute chart, where we actually continued the uptrend and reversed to the upside. And we can see right now the trend is slowly shifting, not from, um, you know, the upside to the downside, but from the downside, as you guys can see here, to the upside, right? The 50 SMA, the 180 SMA, these SMAs, they're no longer acting as resistances. They are now acting as support levels. We're seeing higher highs, higher lows. The 50 SMA is crossing above the 180 SMA, which is a bullish sign. So right now, especially since we ran up on the S&P, the uptrend is intact still in the market. And this leads me to believe, you know, if we gap up tomorrow or let's say on the flip side, let's say we see futures in the morning slowly starting to gap down a bit, um, you know, maybe to pull back for another higher low. That's going to be telling me if we're pulling back, I'm going to be looking for that retest here on this trend line for the continuation of the uptrend. And from there, we may be able to get into a couple of market ETFs that do well when the S&P is going up. And I'll actually talk about that in a couple of minutes here. So there's different ways um, that this can end up playing playing out. We can pull back, retest, and pop. We can maybe gap up again before pulling back and retesting. That is kind of what I'm thinking right now, but the overall trend is shifting to the upside, um, you know, shifting for an uptrend here on the S&P 500. So let, that was actually over a minute, guys. I always start to ramble whenever I'm talking about um, the technicals here on the market, but that is what I'm personally thinking, and that is what I got, you know, from these past couple of days. Although it was a bit over a minute. That was probably like two minutes. Anyway, let's just get right into it, guys. The top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching, starting off here with UGAS, guys. And UGAS is an ETF that trades based upon natural gas, ticker symbol UGAZ. And UGAS has been doing quite well over the past couple of trading days, simply because natural gas has been reversing to the upside and breaking resistance after resistance. And we'll take a look at those technicals here in a minute. But if we're going over here to you guys, you guys can see, you know, it broke out of the 50 SMA resistance and the 180 SMA resistance after finding a bottom here at 1297. So if you time this perfectly, let's say you got in at $13, you know, you'd be up a significant amount right now, probably 15 to 20% um, on your money, which is amazing, right? And we're seeing now, you know, 50 SMA has been acting as a support higher 
higher highs, higher lows. We're breaking out of that 180 SMA resistance. We're pulling back, holding it as a support, heading into the market close on Friday and after market hours on Friday. So now all we need to see, this is actually setting up for a perfect entry point in my opinion. You know, if we slowly start to gap up in the morning, this could be what we need to see for the continuation of that higher low, which could end up opening up a very nice entry point and an exit point roughly at about, um, you know, I'd say the previous resistance at about 1730. So I can see, you know, if everything plays out perfectly here, an entry at 1680 up to maybe 1730, 1740, that can offer about a four or five percent margin of profit. And of course, if you gas breaks out even more, if natural gas, let's say, goes on another rally, it can offer a lot more than just four percent. And if we go to natural gas, you guys can see the uh, reversal that we're seeing here. You know, we were getting rejected by the 50 and the 180 SMA. We found the bottom. We recovered. We were actually under that SMA resistance for a couple of days. At this point, I was like, this could be a good play on DGAS, which is actually the inverse to UGAS, because if we were to dump to this side, that would have offered a lot of DGAS margin. But since we're breaking out, we're playing the inverse or looking to play the inverse, which in this case is UGAS, right? So UGAS, it's looking good. Good because again, natural gas is slowly breaking out of the moving average resistances. We're holding that 50 SMA support nicely. Now, all we need to see again is that pop, and from there, we'll be able to play U gas. So, the second one, uh, this is actually a stock that I'm watching, and I talked about it in yesterday's video. If you guys were able to catch that video about three stocks I'm looking to swing trade in the month of July, but I'll talk about it again right here for those of you guys that didn't catch that. It's Alibaba, ticker symbol B-A-B-A. -B -A. And take a look at Alibaba, guys. A bunch of the ones that I'm going to be talking about in today's video kind of have the same technicals. They've been beaten down over the past couple of months. In this case, Baba and a lot of other Chinese companies. But in Baba's case, it went down from 195 to 158, opening up about a 20-25% margin of profit. From there, we found the bottom. We've been making higher highs, higher lows, reversing out of that 50 SMA resistance, holding it as a new support. And now we're seeing a bullish cross on the 184 hour chart, which is very attractive in my opinion. We pulled back, we held the 180 and the 50 SMA as a support. Now we got hit at the 173 level of resistance, which was actually a resistance from back in the beginning of February. And we're pulling back and looking to potentially retest this 50 SMA and this trend line support here tomorrow, right? So this is actually opening up another potential entry point starting off in the market tomorrow, like right away. If the first 30 uh, minutes, hour of the market are looking good for BABA, let's say we pull back and retest 168, which is ideally the level that I would like to get in, you know, that could be a good entry point, especially if we slowly start to climb back up from there. So I'm being a bit patient, seeing if we pull back and we retest, or let's say we pop and maybe start to get back into the 170s, I'll play it differently from there and the whole thing here is guys to just pay attention what is going on uh, pre-market with the stocks and you can set up your plan um, based on that but as of now we obviously don't know what the pre-market is going to be looking like so I'm kind of just judging it off a couple of scenarios that could potentially play out so Alibaba I'm liking it 3M is another one that on the technical basis it's very similar to Alibaba right take a look we got hit from 220 down to about 159 if we go back to Alibaba we can see how hard they got hit. And in 3M's case, you know, we're actually seeing the start of a bullish cross as well as Alibaba's case. So let's go to 3M very quickly. You guys can see this is not 3M, that's 3M plus B, but 3M is this one. And we're seeing, you know, the break out of the 50 SMA. That was the first confirmation of the reversal. We're seeing the hold on that level as a support. That's very good. The higher high, the break out of the 180 SMA resistance. And now we're pulling back and we're retesting that 50 SMA level as well as the 180 SMA level here on the 184 hour chart. And we're seeing that we're uh, slowly starting to climb back up. And there is a strong resistance on M, uh, 3M here at about 174 
to about 175 ish I would say so if I just pulled out my uh, you know drawing tool very quickly and stretched this out a bit you can probably see it so I think this can go either two ways we pull back we retest the 50 SMA and then maybe pop up from there that would give us a bit of an entry point that has more uh, margin of profit on it because it'll obviously be at a lower price or let's say we gap up tomorrow which could actually happen this could be setting out uh, setting up for a breakout here um, due to the way we ended up shooting up this past Friday so let's say we start to break out which I honestly think is more likely right now for 3m you know we can actually get up to levels of 178 179 where if we go back to these drawing tools you can see you know if you enter it here on the gap up up to that level that's about a two percent margin of profit not bad not bad let's say you're playing with ten thousand dollars guys that's a two hundred dollar profit um right there and that can very well be a move that lasts one two days probably two days with the way um 3m moves you guys can see it moved about one percent one day that's a pretty good move there if it pops up another let's say 0.5 one day 0.7 the next you know you could get a one 1.2 percent margin um that way so those are a couple scenarios and why i personally like 3m right now so another one is msft also known as microsoft so microsoft has been one of those stocks you know out of the massive companies that you think of out there you know uh google facebook amazon apple microsoft has been one of those that's been doing quite well compared to those other stocks right microsoft hit an all-time high at 138 here but if you see apple for example this hasn't hit an all-time high for a couple of months at this point, right? You see Facebook, it hasn't hit an all-time high since the month of April. So some of these larger companies, out of some of these larger companies, Microsoft has been doing uh, the best, in my opinion, out of them. And you guys can see we pulled back from 138 down to about 133, 134, opening up about a 3 4% margin of profit. And notice how we've clearly been holding the old resistance at about 133 as a new support. So this could be a point in time, especially if we break out of this 50 SMA resistance, where we could be shooting up for another all-time high, especially if tech does well here over these next one, two, three weeks. So that's a big possibility. But let's say we continue to get rejected by that 50 SMA here. Let's say we break below this level of um, uh, support. Let's say we start to get back to the low 130s. I can see it very possible us testing um, the 50 50 SMA here, which would honestly, or rather the 180 SMA, which is this yellow line, which would really open up an even better entry point for Microsoft. So I'm liking that one a lot here heading into this month of July. Another one which has been doing quite well recently is crude oils UWT. And for those of you guys that don't know, UWT is an inverse ETF that trades based upon crude oil. And we've noticed how crude oil at this point broke out of the 180 SMA resistance and broke out of the 50 SMA resistance and we actually got hit at this level at about $60 which was a strong resistance from a couple of months ago. You guys can see the clear rejection there and now we're looking to retest the 57 50 ish to about $58 level which was a resistance that we broke out of making it a new support, right? So this level as well as the 50 SMA, they're both strong support levels right now for crude oil which I think especially Especially with this aggressive dump that it had this previous week, I believe this was on, um, you know, Thursday and Friday. I think we could be due for a bounce back here, um, especially if we do hold those levels. Since the RSI, uh, especially since the RSI, in my opinion, is looking quite oversold right now, or it did see rather a healthy, um, you know, pullback. You know, you can see the line here on the RSI. If that holds, you know, this could be a very good bounce back play. And again, if crude oil does bounce back, expect uh, UWT, not UWL, UWT. You know, this this one could really launch out of that uh, 180 SMA um, resistance and continue this rally that it's been on. So XOP and Gush, those are two other ones that I'm watching right now. Gush is an inverse ETF that goes up whenever XOP is going up as well. So this could play out two different ways, right? Notice how uh, XOP right now is at a resistance under the 180 SMA. Two things can happen here. If this breaks out, this can offer a lot of margin on 
XOP, which is also under the 180-day SMA. Notice how this has been breaking out over the past, you know, week, week and a half, and it could continue its breakout if on the longer scale here, it does something like this. But the beautiful thing about inverse ETFs, guys, is let's say we get rejected by that 180 SMA. We start to cool off since we've done pretty well here over the past week, two weeks in gush. You know, you can play the inverse, which is drip, which obviously um, has been battered, which you guys can't tell here because it had a, a reverse split and it popped up here. But uh, you guys, if you, especially if you've been following Drip, you know that it's been going down over the past couple of days. And this chart will, um, you know, get back, or rather, uh, what's it called here? It'll filter or it'll change for what the price is now. So in a couple of days that it usually takes uh, for it to, you know, get back to on track after a reverse split. And once you see that, once it gets back to what it should be with the new price, you'll be able to see the chart. But if XOP does get rejected at that level, Level, all you guys need to know is pretty much drip DRIP is going to be going up in price. So those are another group of inverse ETFs uh, and kind of what I'm planning on doing with that. And if you guys really think XOP, uh, Gush, Drip are going to be good plays this week, let me know down below in the comments because these are probably the uh, the, the uh, ETF combos that have been doing the best that I've been watching here over the past couple of days. And I would love to know what you guys have to think about them. So the last one that I wanted to talk about today, and I also talked about this one in yesterday's video, is Intel Corporation INTC. Very similar similar to 3M, very similar to Alibaba. This stock has gotten battered. A lot of margin of profit was opened, about 25%. We're breaking out of moving average resistances now. We're holding those resistance levels, old resistance levels as support levels, as you guys can clearly see. We're seeing a bullish cross. Everything is looking juicy right now for INTC for the entry point, especially since we pulled back this past week and we retested that 50 SMA support that's been a support over the past couple of days slash weeks. So INTC, this one can break out. Next resistance I'm looking at is $50. You know, from where we are now up to that level, 3-4% margin of profit is offered. So those are pretty much all that I've written down here on my laptop or rather on my notepad. And of course, course, guys, I'm always watching these group of market ETFs here. We have the uh, volatility ETFs, which are TVIX and UVXY. You know, those do well when the markets are very volatile and typically going down in price, right? So if we saw a huge sell-off, these are ones that can literally run 20-30% in a day. We saw TVIX a couple of weeks ago. I know you guys remember this. TVIX had a 40% day at one point in the day. It was up 40%. That's absolutely absurd. So I'm watching that one. I'm watching SQQQ, which goes up whenever the NASDAQ 100 is selling off. I'm watching SQQQ. SPXS, which goes up whenever the S&P 500 is selling off on a scenario where if the markets pull back, you know, these are always good to have on the watch list and to track throughout the day for some quicker moves here because they are volatility ETFs and they are leveraged ETFs. So that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you're interested in seeing more content from me, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. Follow me on Instagram. Join our Discord community, our Facebook group. All of that extra stuff is linked down below if you want to be a part of our community and talk to me on a more personal basis. Everything is linked down below. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. It means a lot. Peace out.